Okay, so we're going to assume that you've made it through the last three lessons, and now we have to introduce you to negative exponents. And what I'm going to do is show you the basics of negative exponents, like how they can react, how we can make them into positive exponents, and then walk you through about basically taking you through the old stuff that we did and then introduce those negative exponents into what we did. You know, so here's the, the power raised to a power, but now what happens whenever you see a negative exponent in that situation? Or, you know, in the division setup, what happens when you see the negative exponents in that? So that's where we're going with this. Now, the, the first thing that you have to understand is, is that they're asking us to simplify these problems. They're not asking us to solve them. They're asking us to simplify. And so that's the same. But there's a rule when you go to clean up uh, an exponential expression that you cannot end with a negative exponent. So if you're sitting here looking at a variable with a negative exponent or a... a um, a number with a negative exponent, you have to change it. And the easiest way I can tell you that is it's the same way as like when you're a, a kid. Sometimes you just need alone time. And so if you're in a room full of people, you need to get out of that room and you need to go someplace else and be a little bit uh, by yourself. The next thing you know, you're, you're pretty happy. So this n to the negative 6 is not happy where it's at. So we'll draw a fraction bar and we will take the m and put it underneath that fraction bar. And whatever the exponent is that's negative, we will make it a positive. And if nobody is, is above that m to the 6th, we'll just put a 1 there as a placeholder. So how do we make this x to the negative 3rd a positive? Don't draw a fraction bar and just move this x downstairs. Whatever the exponent is, if it's negative 3, it becomes positive 3, and we'd put a 1 on it. Now, right here for 2 to the negative 4th, well, he's just like the m and the x. He wants to move downstairs, just get a little bit of alone time. Everything's good. And so this negative 4 exponent will become a positive exponent. And we put a placeholder of a 1 up here. Um, and what's cool is, is that you quickly see that these negative exponents do not mean we have negative numbers. It literally just means we have very small numbers because 2 to the 4th is nothing more than, let's see here, that's 4, that's 8. That'd be a 16 on the bottom. So 2 to the negative 4th is the same thing as 1 16th. Now, <clears throat> let's take a look at, at this situation over here real quick. If I had 3 x to the negative second power, the next thing that I need to show you is, is that um, we don't move everything. We only move what has a negative exponent. And then in this case, we know that that 3 is a coefficient. It's multiplying the x. So we're going to move just the x and that negative second power underneath. And, and now the x is happy. And if you're wondering, well, why don't we move the 3? Well, here's the thing. If you don't see an exponent on a number, it's got a positive exponent of a 1. That means it's happy exactly where it's at. So we're going to leave this 3 right there. So let's do a 4x to the negative 8. The 4 is happy. It's got a positive exponent. So the 4 would stay exactly where it's at. And the x would go underneath. Okay. So let's kind of clear this up a little bit here. Um, what about um, 16 m to the 8th power? Do we need to move anything around? Well, let's ask ourselves, is this 16 happy? Well, it's got a positive 1 for the exponent, so that one's happy. It's going to stay exactly where it's at. What about the m to the 8th? Well, it's got a positive exponent, so it's going to stay exactly where it's at. Okay? But if if we came back through and we said, well, what if we said this was 16 to the negative second power, m to the eighth power? Well, you ask yourself, what's the, the coefficient's exponent? In this case, it's negative, so that's the one that's got to move down to the bottom. This m to the eighth, well, you know, that's the reason we, we moved the 16 down is because of the negative exponent, but the m to the eighth it has a positive exponent. We want to keep it exactly where it's at. So let's, let's start getting into how we take this new information and apply it to what we already know. We know that we're going to multiply the coefficients right here. 2 times 3 is 6. And we know that we're going to add the exponents right here because that would be x to the 6th. Okay. So what happens when we get a negative exponent? Well, we're still going to multiply our coefficients. That would be a 6. But what's negative 2 plus 4? And you'd see that would be a positive 2. And that's how we do it. We, we just add and subtract the way we always have. And um, we ask ourselves, is this 6 happy? Yep. Is this x happy? Yep. So 6x squared 
is your final answer. There's nothing else to do. But when we get over to this situation, let's go ahead and multiply our coefficients. 2 times 3 is 6. What happens when you add up a negative 2 plus a negative 4? Well, you would get negative 6. And that's when we got to start asking ourselves, well, is the 6 happy? This coefficient's happy because it's got a positive exponent, so the 6 is right here. But what about this little guy? He's not happy, so we'll draw the fraction bar, move him underneath, and this is our final answer. 6 over x to the 6th power. So that's how we handle this multiplication of exponents when we see a negative in there. We, we go ahead and multiply our coefficients. We add up our exponents. After we do all that, we just ask ourselves, is everybody happy? Do we, do we have to change any of these negative exponents? Let's take a look at this. This is where we're going to have to do a new style, and this is where it usually causes a little bit of an issue. Um, you have to take all of the inside exponents, and you multiply them by the outside exponent. So this 2 has an exponent of 1. This x has an exponent of 3. So take this outside exponent of a 3 and multiply it by this exponent right here. And we would get 2 to the third power. The 2 stays the same. That's your base. But this 1 exponent times this outside 3 exponent gets us 3 for the new exponent right here. This x is going to do the same thing. 3 times 3 is 9. And then we ask ourselves, hey, is everybody happy? It sure is. Take care of this 2 to the 3rd. And we know it's 8x to the ninth power for our final answer. Uh, let's try this one again real quick just so you get the hang of it. Uh, this exponent multiplies, oops, sorry, threw it to the wrong one. This exponent of 1 multiplies the outside exponent, so it would be 4 to the 2nd. And then that m's exponent of a 2 multiplies the outside one, and that gets us a 4. And it simplifies down to 16m to the 4th. Now, what happens when we have negative exponents? Well, we still do the multiplication. We still respect our multiplication rules with negative numbers. So it would be 2 to the negative 3rd, x to the negative ninth. Ask yourself, are they happy? Well, the 2 is not happy, so the 2 is going downstairs. The x is not happy either, so that's going downstairs. And remember, we talked about it. What happens when nothing's left there? We put a placeholder over 1. And so now, we're going to draw this line back here. We're going to have 1 over 8x to the ninth. Let's try this one real quick. So this would be 4 to the negative second. And this would be m to the fourth, because a negative times negative is positive. So we still respect those rules. This is where it gets a little bit more interesting here. The 4 is not happy. This 4 right here is unhappy because it's got that negative second uh, power on there. So we move that underneath. But this m is completely content to stay where it's at. And now we just finish it up. It will be m to the fourth over 16. Okay, and I'll circle this answer over here. Last thing we got to do, these right here. <clears throat> well, if you recall, and, and you should be pretty good with this now, we take a look at our coefficients and we try to divide the first thing that we do. And so 6 divided by 2 is 3, and we always write our answer up top. Now, I like to just let the variables sit where they're at. And after I handle the coefficients, the next thing I do is I go, is everybody happy? Or my, the three's happy, the x is here is happy, this is happy. And <clears throat> then what we can do is we can then cancel out, okay? And this is, I'm just kind of expanding it. There's two on top, there's one on bottom. So our final answer would be three x, nothing on the bottom, okay? Now, what happens uh, for our coefficients? I'll do this one in, in the black here. What happens when our coefficients can't divide? Well, we try to simplify. 3, 6 would simplify down to 1 over 2. And then we've got x to the 4th here and x to the 4th there. And again, what we need to do is ask ourselves, is everybody happy? It is. So then we can get on to canceling if we can, since they're on top and bottom. And they would completely cancel out. There's no x's left. So guess what? 1 half is their answer. Now. We can't divide because there's only one coefficient here, and we can't simplify. So basically, um, it's that third way of handling coefficients. You just leave them where they lay if you can't do anything else with them. And this is where we're, we're taking a look at this right here. There's more on the bottom than on the top, but again, they're both happy. We haven't experienced negative exponents yet. So 3 stays up top, 
these two x's are canceled out but they take out two on the bottom and we have two left over okay so now we're going to come back through here and we're going to take a look at what happens with negative exponents and this is what we've got here 10 divided by 5 is 2 and i'm going to write that right underneath it and i'm going to keep the exponents right where they're at okay next thing we ask ourselves is are they happy well the two's happy the x to the fourth right here is happy but this x to the negative second is not happy so we need to move that one downstairs and only that one because that's the only one that's unhappy now guys how many x's do we have on the bottom now x to the sixth well there you go that's how you can handle that situation right there there's nothing to cancel because they're all on the same level and they're all happy now uh, let's take a look at this one um, this is very much like this one up here. It's it's a simplifying one. 18 over 36 simplifies down to one half. And let's put x to the fourth right here, and let's put x to the negative fourth down here. So again, after we take care of the coefficients, let your variable sit for a second and just ask yourself, is everybody happy? Does anybody need to move? Well, this x to the fourth is happy, but this one down here is not. So we're going to pop that one up to the top. And you guessed it. We've got x to the eighth on top. And we've got the two on the bottom. You can put the one in front of it if you want. That's kind of optional. When you've got something else up there, you don't have to put that one as a coefficient. Okay, but I'll just let that one sit. All right, last thing right here. Uh, we can't do anything with this coefficient, so it's just going to sit on the bottom. Let's go ahead and put x to the negative sixth here and x to the negative fourth here. This time, you'll see that both of them are unhappy, so just go ahead and rearrange them. Okay, just go ahead and rearrange them trying to finish the bell just rang. X to the sixth goes to the bottom. X to the fourth goes on top. You know, they're not on the same levels like they were over here. Now it's to this canceling out. But, hey, we don't cancel out to everybody's happy. In this case, 12 is going to stay on the bottom. We're going to have two X's on the bottom. Nothing's left on top, so we'll just put a placeholder over one. 